I feel delighted to invite Mr. Lohitaksha Maniraj Mayer to share his insight. Insight over to you, sir. Sir, before uh, just hand over to you. Uh, so this is a five days uh, FTP program, virtual, uh, sponsored or uh, funded by the Atal Academy, is it in New Delhi? Successfully, we finished four four days, and this is last day. I would like uh, hand over the session to you, sir. Now sessions to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm welcome and uh, opportunity to present uh, the experiences from our previous project. So I am Dr. Lohitaksha Maniraj Mayer. Uh, so uh, currently I am assistant professor in the Department of uh, Entrepreneurship Management, IIT Hyderabad. I recently joined here last month, and before joining here, I was actually involved uh, with the Reemit project uh, about which I will be talking today, and uh, I was like. Uh, 1.5 years almost i worked as a postdoc researcher in this uh, project um, <clears throat> so this is an extension of my phd my phd was on as introduced by madam my phd was on uh, modeling and analysis of efficient transportation for food grain supply chains which is basically non perishable uh, item so my focus was to develop transportation network design uh, for the indian uh, food grain supply chain system and then uh, this project uh, interested me and applied for this because of uh, uh, because of its relevance with my phd which is now this focuses on perishable food items and uh, uses big data and iot to reduce food waste so that was my motivation to work for this and i had a good experience which i would like to share with you all today so the topic of today's uh, presentation um is uh, big data and iot in agri food supply chain management uh, so i would be discussing first uh, before jumping into the project uh, first brief introduction of uh, what is this uh, big data and you may already know but uh, just to revise this concept um, and then uh, move, move forward for uh, what is remit project and some cases that we are uh, that remit project is currently aiming to solve and reduce food waste in different regions across the Uh, united kingdom and uh, europe previously it was one single uh, europe but then because of brexit now it's divided into uk and europe so but still the project addresses both the all the regions across uk and europe so yeah first outlining about uh, the presentation today uh, uh, like i mentioned earlier it would discussing briefly about big data and internet of things uh, what is the relevance and use of big data and iot to agri food sector How big sir, data and IoT? Yes. So full screen make it, sir. Is, is it not full screen now? Yes, no, sir. APT not full screen. Oh, uh, I think uh, I have just made it. Uh, I mean, I'm working from full screen only. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Let me, okay, let me just stop share and uh, I'll try another way. I, uh, I'll try to share the whole screen instead of the window. Uh, yes. Sir. That might be helpful. so i'm um... yes now fine now now is it fine okay so yeah i hope uh, yeah this is the first slide so just brief, briefly discussing the outline um Uh, some introduction uh, on uh, big data internet of things how big data would be used in agri food uh, sector how big data analytics can help uh, bring sustainability into the agri food supply chains and then finally the remit project and cases cases from remit project uh, so basically big data is uh, now uh, the norm uh, is most uh, kind of a buzzword in business analytics uh, so it generates because of generation of a huge volume of data in the presence of a huge amount of technology available with us uh, kind of different types of sensors available with us to bring data so we get lots of data in the form of structured as well as unstructured uh, formats um, and when uh, we have big data usually means uh, any data set that is too big to be efficiently worked in real time with with traditional database tools um so it it is basically driven by uh four v's if you already know it's uh, volume veracity velocity and variety we'll just briefly know see what the definitions of these um so different sources of uh, big data are mobile phones 
uh, we have uh, several devices iot devices which are responsible for generating huge uh, data uh, businesses have also realized that these data could hold promise to give deeper insights into their customers partners and businesses uh, so because of these uh, large amount of data being generated there is a fifth uh, we also uh, nowadays coming into picture that fifth we is volume uh, value that is despite volume veracity velocity and variety that define the big data after uh, it is collected and based on the kind of quality of data and the kind of uh, use that is to the stakeholders to the industry to the different uh, agencies uh, uh, the chunk of data that you own um, uh, also has a value so there are five ways instead of four ways uh, as a fifth dimension of uh, big data so a brief discussion on what is veracity volume variety and velocity so veracity is the quality of uh, the big data that we have um and reliability uh, basically how reliable the data you collect is uh, and how how you can uh, because basically if you want to do data analytics it is uh, there is a saying that garbage in garbage out so it is important to uh, have the quality and reliable uh, data while you do data analytics any kind of either normal or big data analytics and of course volume the growth of data from terabytes to yottabytes um, this gives rise to the need for additional data uh, dimensionality reduction techniques uh, to learn about uh, how to reduce the huge dimensions available in the big data to workable uh, number of dimensions and then variety so because of the type of data which is not only uh structured but you can also see unstructured data and semi structured data in the kind of data that you receive you need to pre process such huge amount of data and um, finally velocity velocity is if you want to do real time computations with the help of big data the main aim of uh, capitalizing on big data is to uh, <clears throat> use use the large amount of data to do some real time computations so in order to be able to do that we have the speed of data uh, with which the data comes in and gets stored into the server is is very high so we, the technology should be capable of dealing with such high uh, speed of data um and synchronization of time is very important so let's see how i mean just a brief introduction on the evolution of uh, internet of things because the remit project is basically uh, basically uses iot technology so iot technology how did it come all uh, i mean what was the evolution so as you can see the industrial revolution was started with with the mechanic uh, mechanization and uh, using the basic uh, water power and steam power in 1784 so as you can see this is the picture of the first power loom which was used uh, during the uh revolution industrial revolution the first industrial revolution and then it came and then the next revolution was when um assembly lines were introduced and uh, mass production uh, uh was uh, was being done by ford manufacturing in the western uh, western regions of the globe so uh, that's when again uh, slowly it moved on towards in 1969 the when the computer and automation came into picture uh it was <clears throat> the next uh, kind of industrial revolution which which uh, uh totally uh, replaced the mechanical systems into computerized system programmable logic controllers mechatronics all this came into picture and then um uh, in the recent past cyber physical systems all of these were developed in the context of manufacturing production and finally cyber physical system also is an inclusive kind of uh, system which uses uh, internet of things for manufacturing uh, domains and this kind of uh, advantages that were reaped because of uh, using iot systems were spread across different domains now uh, lots and lots of domains are using uh, not only in manufacturing and production uh, but also in uh, several other uh, service sector uh iot is being used uh, and this is considered as a revolution like we are currently using in uh supply chains uh, uh not only food supply chains many other kind of supply chains we use 
Uh, there is a huge amount of use of IoT technology to extract data, and that's why big data is coming into picture. So this is the uh, history behind the evolution of IoT and cyber physical systems, etc., which is which is also called as Industry 4.0. Um, so now Internet of Things, why has it come, uh, or why has it become more important because of the existence of several uh, wireless communication uh, devices and the uh, uh, evolution of the internet, uh, 3G, 4G, 5G. So this technologically evolving uh, internet uh, protocols. Also, then uh, that's on the software front. And on the hardware front, we have several types of hardware that are coming up, such as radio frequency identification tags, sensors, actuators, uh, smartphones, etc., all uh, supporting us to generate lots and lots of data. And there is uh, these sensors which can interact with each other as well, uh, uh, to some extent, and uh, generate this data. So this is why uh, uh, Internet of Things is more prominently used in these days. So, and uh, there are different domains in which, as I mentioned earlier, transportation and logistics, healthcare, smart environments, personal and social uh, um, uh, so, uh, domains also. And uh, there are several futuristic uh, applications which uh, IoT promises to uh, develop. So this is uh, this is uh, this the different domains. And uh, in in the UK context, we can see that IoT and big data are being used by several companies, such as Transport for London uh, is a company which uh, uses IoT and data. Uh, Voka Link, which is a transaction service to banks, and and there's a retailer called New Look. New Look had uh, it uses uh, used big data to uh, to uh, uh, to design the products uh, for the new types of clothes, new fashion trends, etc. Based on uh, big data and uh, based on data from customers uh, who have purchased previously and their opinions and uh, their uh, online reviews. So New Look, uh, but uh, but nowadays. Uh, uh, New Look is no longer uh, being operated, mm. and uh, BT is a telecommunication device which also uses big data uh, for uh, as an application. And supermarkets uh, and online chains such as Asda, Coop, uh, and there are several uh, supermarket online chains which are using big data, and also uses uh, and uh, many SMEs also use big data. So what big data and IoT has. Uh, can promise in agri-food uh, domain. Uh, so if, if you have tractors with sensors would help us to track the uh, soil and crop conditions uh, for use by farmers. Um, and um, we have online mapping of weeds, uh, weather data, uh, social media data to predict marketing trends and consumer sentiment for uh, specific foods. Um, then, um, there are several success stories which uh, one can always uh, refer to in these uh, references. Uh, predicting how weather data um, uh, with big data and uh, uh, they can provide targeted insurance to farmers uh, based on the different types of weather conditions for a particular region. So th there are several types of predictive analytics that we can do with the help of uh, data available. Uh, as far as the sustainability implications are concerned, uh, concerned uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization says that there is 1.3 billion tons of food which is wasted uh, uh, in the world every year. So 40% of food in America is wasted and 20% of food that we buy never gets eaten. That is all wasted. So according to the statistics shown by food. So to structure, structure, we do not come. So, Lohit Akshi, sir. Lohit Akshi, sir. Sir? I think he got disconnected. Disconnected, yes, yes. Some technical issue.
Dear partsman, we'll wait for two minutes. I think technical issue. I'm calling, sir. I'm calling the Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, you join again, huh? Yeah, submitted a tissue, you join. Say it. Very good, sir. Yes, sir. You engage, sir, you talk about this uh, examination, all these things. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, dear participants, a small uh, announcement. For afternoon session, uh, due to some uh, uh, emergency, due to some other reasons, uh, that is Mr. Uh, Arvind from Crop in Bengaluru will not uh, engage in. And uh, instead of that, uh, many people requested Ganesh sir going to be handling a session for half an hour, going to be talk about different source of open availability of data. Uh, he will show uh, entire how uh, open availability data is available. It, it will be in half an hour session. After that, uh, followed by your MCU, MCQ question answer uh, examination part. Examination uh, which contain 40, 40 questions for MCQs and um, 9 marks for open-ended uh, questions. Open-ended questions exclusively for your descriptive type. Like you can write about the session wise, what is your outcome, what is your uh, uh, no, enhancing skills after the sessions. That will be continued and after that we'll have a validity and feedback. So uh, this is the schedule for afternoon. Uh, the exam will be start by 2.30 will end by 3.30 and half an hour will have validity and uh, you know, whatever uh, validity function all these things. Okay. And uh, well, from MCQ, uh, the review uh, open question will be the second. Yeah, take right. Told, uh, sir. Yeah, key takeaways also will be there. There is, uh, there is no right or wrong answer, just you want to do what is the key takeaways. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. That is what. Uh, In assessment based on MCQ only, if any yes. or anything, I will take, will consider these also. Because all MCQs, whatever you got its score, will just upload to the AICT. Now, straight away, AICT will provide you. Excuse uh, me. Yes, sorry please. To, sorry to interrupt. Uh, what about the session for the AI in agriculture? That is what I told you, right? Due to some other reason that the resource person is not available. So, okay. that, that's the reason Ganesh sir will engage in for our for now session. That's exclusive talk about different source of data. Okay, Open availability data. Okay. That is for half an hour. It will start by 2 o'clock. will end 2.30. Followed by 2.30 to 3.30 examination, which contains MCQ questions and as well as open-ended questions. The only uh, MCQ questions we will uh, consider for the, your assessment. After that, validity like 15 minutes. That is a afternoon schedule. Accordingly, we can go. Clear, sir? Uh, Aditya, my sir. Is it clear? Hello. I think that is uh, all uh, no afternoon schedule. Yes, sir, I'm audible. I made the full screen now. Are you able to see? No, sir. No, sir. Yes. Now. Yeah, yes. No, no, can you again can. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was uh, 
taking some uh, presenting some statistics from uh, www.savethefood.com it says uh, uh, different types of uh, percentages of food that never reaches the table uh, seafood 30% fruits and vegetables 48% grain products 38% meat 22% milk 20% so these are some statistics which say motivate us to focus on reduce the um i was presenting uh, that uh, how climate change is also a reality and its uh, impact it's impacting uh, uh, also i mean contribution of uh, food waste or carbon put footprint from food waste towards climate change so to understand that what is climate change climate change is basically the change in climate due to uh, several uh, operations that we do or basically on the planet and resulting and which results in the carbon and ghg emissions which finally end up uh, giving rise to some events such as global temperature rise warming of oceans shrinking ice sheets glacial threats uh, decreased uh, snow cover sea level rise and um, these are some statistics that uh, help us to understand how food waste is contributing to uh, climate change so first we need to understand how much is food wasted so this is some statistics from uh, one of the presentations made by alexandra hini who is a phd candidate in stanford uh, he presented that uh, the total amount of food waste in landfills for us is equivalent to 2% of energy consumption and uh, 25% of us methane emissions uh, uh, which is uh, the food waste from landfills is giving rise to this much of energy and emissions uh, so uh, it's important to focus on uh, carbon footprint from food waste also uh and these are some statistics from food and agriculture organization fao for which says the which which shows the food wastage and uh, the contributions from each food wastage uh, towards carbon footprint so this is the link we uh, we can have uh, from food waste uh, food wastage uh, how they impact the climate uh and Uh, finally we, these are videos that you can uh, see and refer to uh, which highlight the importance of uh, sustainability implications of uh, from the food waste so how can big data and iot help in reducing food waste uh, there are several sources of data that we can uh, Uh, take from uh, the uh, food supply chains so food waste saved is much more than the value of waste that's uh, the tagline uh, when we focus on reducing uh, wastage we may not get uh, or the business may not gain much monetary value but uh, the food waste saving itself is important because of sustainability and several other uh, social and environmental benefits and uh, smart sensors uh, can keep track of fresh freshness of the food including temperature color and odor which uh, basically avoid food wastage uh, and help us not even to generate the food waste in the first place so smart sensors can be used in the first place and then rfid tags can contain full information on the date of harvest date of processing date of transport from factories continuous monitoring of temperature odor color and uh, different types of parameters that define the quality of uh, food basically so this is how sensors can help us to monitor uh, track food waste and control food waste uh, uh, in uh, in the food supply chains and for some uh, supermarkets uh, sensors can support decisions on whether to sell at a discounted price donate to charity or send to landfill so these decisions are critical to the businesses in terms of how much they can save once they realize that food is being wasted so there are different decisions that we can take at different stages of the food waste uh, food waste uh, supply chains and sensors in smart fridges uh, we can install uh, sensors inside the smart fridges and they can be connected to smartphone apps uh, which can ultimately uh, make aware the different actors of the supply chain right from the farmers uh, transporters to send to landfill so these decisions are critical to the businesses in terms of how much they can save once they realize that food is being wasted so there are different decisions that we can take at different stages of the food waste uh, food waste uh, supply chains and sensors in smart fridges uh, we can install uh, sensors inside the smart fridges and they can be connected to smartphone apps uh, 
which can ultimately uh, make aware the different actors of the supply chain right from the farmers uh, transporters distributors and retailers they can made uh, be made aware of uh, what the status of the food product being stored in the fridges if they are if they are being overloaded or if they are being uh, if there is more capacity available to store in the fridges or if or if there is a power power shut uh, outage and you can know remotely whether the uh, the foods are being wasted or if the temperature uh, thresholds are going lower than what they should they should be in the cold storages etc so these cold storages can be made smart and uh, manual intervention can be made as minimum as possible um and uh, so usage of smart garbage bins smart waste management systems and smart garbage trucks so all of these uh, are made possible with the help of iot sensors available uh, in the market there are huge amount of commercially av uh, available iot sensors which which need to be uh, taken for the particular uh, application so and finally there are some apps in the uk context such as olio which help us to say for example if in a household if uh if you know that uh, we we have ordered some food and some of the food is not used by us and it's getting extra you can always uh, mention in this olio app that we have so much amount of food and uh, these are food sharing apps and uh, people can either collect from you or you can go and deposit into donation bins or uh food collection uh, outlets uh so finally the uh, kind of uh, technology architecture that we use uh, that Uh, a generic technology architecture that is generally used for the implementation of iot is uh, three tier architecture so the first tier is known as the edge tier which uh, essentially collects the data from different sensors the sensors send the data from primary locations such as uh, inside from inside the trucks or from inside the farm lands or from inside the storage uh, locations processing centers or from uh, um, any uh, intermediate hubs facilities etc the sensors are installed in the primary data collection uh, locations and then they are transported into gateway so from the gateway they are then transported into uh, the storage hubs or central storage or intermediate temporary storage or central storage so this is the functions that are that generally are carried out in the edge tier so different types of sensors and gateways will be chosen based on the type of environments whether it is stationary or whether it is moving or whether it is on trucks or uh, vibratory environments etc so the different kinds of sensors are available for different kinds of applications so this is the total work being done in the edge tier and then once the data is received then uh, the total data processing is uh, conducted in the platform tier so data processing and decision making etc is made in the platform tier where the software platform basically collects all the data pre processes all the data and conducts the data transformation required for the doing the data analysis so data analysis uh, can be either done offline or online online means uh, for real time data offline means uh, for historical data so this can be done uh, uh, and uh, relevant insights can be developed and again the results can be again stored in another database uh, which needs for the protection so this is where i uh, as i mentioned the fifth week comes into picture so once we do all this then this kind of data might be used for certain stakeholders uh, where uh, it has a value since some amount of processing is done on the data and we have done some value addition to the data so in this way it is important to store and protect the data and to comply with the data trust because many industries they would want the data to not be shared with everyone so this kind of data confidentiality data trust data privacy all comes in this stage uh, when we want to store the data for longer period of time it's important to have uh, defined metrics uh, to uh, store the data and to uh, use the data uh, compliant with industry policies and uh, data for example gdpr is considered very important in the uk which is known as uh, data uh, protection uh, policy gdpr policy which is important for uh, uh, saving the data of personal data and industrial data for all the uh, stakeholders involved in the project so such policies uh, need to be compliant with and for that purpose we need a separate um, uh, tier which is known as uh, enter uh, enterprise tier which generally integrates all the departments all the functions here the data is now being shared across different uh, functions of the organization or two or more organizations so in this case um, uh, uh, the, um, all the data trust data privacy uh, issues come into picture and it's important to maintain
Yeah, I think it's disconnected. One minute, I'll just call the resource person. No, no, he's not muted. I think somebody, but I'll call him. Seems major technical and Hello, sir. Is my voice audible now? Now it's audible, sir. You can uh, share your screen, sir. Yeah. Yeah, make it full screen, sir. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. okay, yeah. Thank you. So, I was yeah, telling about uh, the uh, food, uh, food waste stages across the different stages. So, there is huge amount of scope to reduce the food waste even before it reaches the household. So uh, this is categorized into a food pyramid, food waste pyramid, which is 5% uh, of, of wastage for wholesale logistics, 11% for primary production, 12% for food service, 19% for processing. So the first four uh, uh, levels of the pyramid, uh, the top four levels of the pyramid can be focused on. And that is what motivated uh, for the proposal to write the Reamit project proposal. And uh, it focuses on the pre-household food waste uh, with the use of big data and IoT to reduce the pre-household uh, pre food waste. So that's the motivation for Reamit project. And um, it stands for, Reamit actually stands for uh, improving the resource efficiency of agribusiness supply chains by minimizing waste using IoT sensors. So this project is a consortium of uh, several academic institutions, industry partners, uh, where academic institutions, uh, uh, University of Bedfordshire is the lead partner. And um, we have other uh, institutions such as University College uh, Dublin, University of Nantes, uh, Nottingham Business School, uh, IT Trally, Ulster University. Um, and yeah, these are the different uh, academic institutions. And as far as the industries are concerned, uh, Images and Rizzo uh, from France, uh, Levstone again from the UK, Visor, uh, Senex, uh, Valorial Action Sense. So these are different uh, industries. The main functions of uh, different organizations I was presenting uh, earlier. And Professor Ram Ramanathan from University of Bedfordshire is the lead investigator of this project. Uh, 
I was a researcher uh, postdoc under uh, Professor Ram for uh, the time period I was with associated with the Reamit project. So the challenge uh, that Reamit uh, aims to address is uh, the amount of food waste, as you can see from the Northwest Europe region, is 35% of food waste in the EU28 has occurred in uh, agri supply chains. So once uh, EU28 is the 28 region, uh, countries of Europe. Now, since UK is out of it, it's known as EU27. Uh, so this is the amount of food waste in the Northwest region alone. So we aim to reduce this at least by 10% by the end of the project. Remit focuses on fresh foods. Now, fruits, vegetables, fish, and meat. These are the four categories of food that Remit originally intended to focus on. But now, um, based on the interest of different industries, we are open to... Uh, apply the Remit technology for other food categories as well. For we're slowly trying to ex they are slowly uh, trying to extend to liquid foods such as milks, juices, and uh, uh, other liquid foods. Um, then Remit challenge uh, basically uh, it aims to address the challenge by demonstrating the power of IoT sensors and big data, as I mentioned earlier, in improving the resource efficiency of uh, agri agri food supply chains. So we so the Remit project aims to deploy IoT sensors for reducing food waste and hence improve resource efficiency. They aim to collect the data in the cloud and conduct big data analytics to identify sources and patterns of food waste uh, with you to tackling them. So this is what Remit project aims uh, by the end of the project. It wants to reduce it, the food waste across the NWE region, which is Northwest Europe region, by at least ten uh, percent, and the corresponding emissions from these ten percent. Uh, which will amount to around 5.5 metric tons of CO2 per year. That's uh, that also we aim to uh, Remit project aims to uh, reduce. So the to reduce food waste uh, and to also uh, subsequently increase the productivity of the supply chains um, due to uh, amount of resources such as water resources, nutrient resources, fertilizers, etc. Food waste saved uh, is much more than the value of uh, food waste. So as I mentioned earlier, there was a tagline that food waste saved is much more than the value of food waste because we ultimately end up saving so many amount of uh, resources uh, which will be benefit, uh, beneficial to the society, so uh, the environment and the uh, social causes. Um, so the technology that we uh, aim to use is is, uh, is, is the same thing, uh, which is explained figuratively here. So uh, uh, the Remit project aims to install several kinds of sensors inside the trucks. Ultimately, it will transmit all the data to uh, the big data hub server and provide uh, alerting alert uh, to the mobile apps. So all the actors on the supply chain would be having these apps installed in their uh, mobiles, uh, such as the farmers, the uh, production uh, warehouse managers, the uh, truck drivers, and the retail store managers, and uh, so the, all these will have this app, and the app will have real-time data about the quality of food and where the food is transported uh, uh, in real time. So uh, this is the timeline of the Remit project. The total budget of the project was about 4.8 million uh, 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 euros. Uh, start date was 10 January 2019 and uh, it's extended until actually 2023. Previously, it was only till 2022, but uh, because of COVID, the several companies have not participated in the project and because businesses is the main priority for them and uh, because of which uh, the funder organization was uh, happy to extend the project for another one year, so it's extended till 2023. So it's co-funded by Interreg Northwest Europe program. Co-funded means... Uh, 60% of the fund is from the organizations uh, participating in the project, whereas 40%, sorry, 60% is from the funding organization, whereas the remaining 40% of the fund is from uh, from the organization itself. So from, from the participating organizations. So implemented by 12 partners from UK, Ireland, France, and uh, Netherlands. And there are other six associated partners as well. So totally there are six uh, universities, three SMEs, one food production enterprise, and two business development agencies. Uh, University of Bedfordshire as a lead partner. So these are the different partners. Mainly uh, the sensor installation, uh, um, we have like three to four to five piloters running at the moment. Piloters means uh, the companies which are happy to provide a platform for testing and demonstrating the Realme technology. So 
Visor is a partner organization which is uh, which is shown here. Visor is a partner organization which which installs the sensors into different uh, pilot organizations, and um, there are several partners who do the data analytics. Uh, after uh, the sensors are installed and data are received, uh, so Levstone, Senex, uh, University of Bedfordshire are uh, responsible for uh, doing the data analytics, and um, there are some uh, academic institutions who are uh, helping us to uh, develop uh, uh, advanced uh, sensor uh, technology such as Raman spectroscopy and 3D fluorescence. So, in addition to the traditional sensors available such as the temperature co2 and etc which i will be explaining in the further slides some uh, organizations are doing research for advanced uh, sensor technologies and to collect data using these advanced sensor technologies so that's the role of other organizations which are shown here and um, before we move on to the exact uh, pilot scenarios let's have a brief diff uh, brief introduction on uh, what roles as a uh, elite partner university of bedford aims to provide for remit so the ship is to provide a subsidy contract with the funder it designs remit partnership agreement and ensures project implementation in line with partnership agreement and approved application ensures strategic objectives set for the project are met and then all the finances reporting and all these uh, activities uh, report, uh, report generating reports to the funder and finally as far as the data analytics is concerned we university of bedfordshire aims to store all the data received from the pilot test and uh, we have built a you know, uh, uh, server big data server uh, which essentially uh, gets all the data from all the pilot uh, tests and uh, sends it to all the partners and it also serves as a platform for doing the data analytics in addition to all the day to day routine uh, uh, coordinating activities so the remit approach basically uh, replaces the traditional uh, food supply chains uh, with the uh, with the iot uh, technology so this is a traditional food supply chain fresh food in the supply chain uh, is either traveling to the is, is traveling to the internet customer either through food in process or through, or through on the move uh, so we aim to deploy the sensors in the production sites in the processing sites or the transportation uh, vehicles uh, and then all the data from these three sources basically are transported into the storage platforms and uh, and linked with the uh, data analytics module which will generate the respective alerts and send to the smartphone app and which is ultimately communicated to the different actors of the supply chain so if the food is not of the appropriate quality if it is found that food is not of the appropriate quality then it is transported to the nearest customer uh, instead of transporting it to the internet customer so if it is transported to the internet customer then if there is a potential if the app says that there is a potential of reducing the wastage uh, sorry if there is a potential of uh, quality degradation and by the end it reaches the internet customer the quality itself is not appropriate then there is no use so uh, it will be transported to the nearest customer nearest customer can be the either food banks or uh, nearest supermarket uh across the in, uh, across the transportation network so these are identified by the ai uh, techniques uh, and finally communicated to the app so that the truck driver can take the respective action so in the remit project we aim to use like i mentioned earlier both traditional kind of sensors to collect data and also newer sensors so traditional sensors are temperature humidity carbon dioxide atmospheric pressure uh, light sensors, volatile organic compound uh, measurement sensors. So these are already being used now and uh, under research, there are new sensors which are being conducted by, for example, Raman spectroscopy is conducted by University of Nantes, where they are trying to predict the quality of uh, uh, samples of food uh, using Raman spectrometer. So about which I will be discussing uh, in the future slides when I uh, present the scenario and case study of this particular uh, Raman spectrometer case study. And uh, the kind of techniques that we use are big data analytics, artificial intelligence, decision support uh, tools. Uh, so with the help of uh, artificial intelligence and decision support tools, the REM project aims to um, identify the nearest consumption points such as local store food banks and food charities and uh, with the help of uh, decision support systems uh, 
the Riemann project aims to develop uh, or optimize the food delivery points based on real time food quality monitoring. And um, uh, they, it also aims to uh, monitor the quality of food, thereby, uh, thereby, or, or um, monitor the quality of food and devise uh, efficient uh, strategies even right at the source, so that the quality of uh, food is maintained for a longer period across the supply chain. So that thereby increasing the food shelf life uh, with the help of uh, real time uh, cold chain monitoring. And uh, food owners, truck drivers, and warehouse managers will be connected using a dedicated uh, smartphone app, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so this is uh, this was the progress earlier um, in the in the Remit project. So as uh, there are huge number of sensors available in the market, so it's important for each pilot test to do a thorough analysis of what kind of sensors is applicable and can be used uh, in the appropriate budget and in in the uh, for and uh, so that each sensors can be can address all the problems that the companies have, uh, like reducing the food wastage or monitoring the quality of that particular type of food. Whether uh, different types of environments are there, means uh, there can be dry environments, there can be chilled environments, there can be frozen, uh, there can be wet, humid environments. So for different kinds of environment, there's different types of sensors available. So this uh, review is, uh, is is being conducted as and when the pilots are approaching. So for each pilot, this is an ongoing process until uh, the, until the end of the project, um, the sensor review. And a framework for measuring uh, waste and avoid carbon emissions uh, is being developed so that each, the, each of these waste reduced can be linked to the amount of carbon emissions reduced. Um, a big uh, data server, as I mentioned earlier, has been procured and installed and given access to different partners so that they can send the data, receive the data for doing, for uh, collecting the data from sensors and also as well as analyzing the data you, uh, by the data analytics partners. So five pilot tests, as I mentioned, are uh, currently being executed across different uh, Northwest Europe countries, UK, France, Germany, and Netherlands. And uh, now data collection uh, has already begun from uh, three pilot studies, whereas two other pilot studies because of COVID, they have uh, they have agreed to participate, but uh, it's being de getting delayed because uh, their priority uh, is mostly uh, to address business needs, and um, they don't have time for research uh, projects. So, although they are happy to participate, but it takes more time because of the COVID disruption. But three pilot tests are running smoothly, and we, besides COVID, they are very helpful to provide this uh, facility, and uh, we are uh, receiving the data now onto the. Uh, big data server from these pilot tests. So moving on to the pilot uh, scenarios. Um, so the pilot test in Netherlands, for example, uh, deals with the uh, transportation of uh, fresh food from a fulfillment center to the final customer. So these uh, this company aims to replace uh, the traditional supermarket or uh, kind of uh, supply chain where customers go to the supermarket and buy the uh, instead of that there are many online companies um, already present but they are uh, trying to uh, deliver uh, uh, in the Netherlands uh, using online order system um, just like we have big basket uh, in Indian context. Similarly, they are trying to replace in the Netherlands and they have a very good customer base. Uh, it's a um, small uh, and medium scale industry which uh, um, which are now popular in, the, in, in this region. So they are facing some problems and uh, while they transport the food, uh, they're facing uh, challenges with respect to maintaining the quality of food. Uh, so they want to use Remit technology to uh, overcome these challenges. So what are these challenges? Let's have a look in the further slides. So this is uh, the picture you can see is the kind of e-truck that they use. Uh, they have uh, different crates uh, in this truck, uh, which carry a combination of orders from uh, different customers. So they accumulate all the orders in the fulfillment center and use this uh, e-truck, uh, ac accumulate uh, uh, consolidate all the orders in this uh, fulfillment center and send it to customers uh, finally. So in the meantime, during the transportation, they have a one, on, one and a half hour or two hours uh, time of traveling uh, in which they, it's, uh, they have to maintain the quality of food in the appropriate level. So right now what they are using is uh, uh, 
to maintain the uh, quality this is the same uh, configuration the, of the the online food supermarket uh, so uh, right now what they are using is cooling packs cooling packs is uh, 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 is uh, like is just like ice blocks uh, cooling packs uh, ice blocks they deposit different uh, cooling packs across the crates uh, across a different uh, portion of these trucks um and they and they follow thumb rule kind of tech, uh, based on their own experience they follow this thumb rule kind of uh, uh, approach uh, to maintain the temperature which is not very accurate so they want to replace this uh, thumb rule kind of approach and have a scientific way of uh, uh, monitoring the temperature or maintaining the temperature so if the season changes for example from summer to winter then uh, their uh, thumb rule uh, kind of technology Uh, they have to remember lots of uh, things in order to maintain the temperature say for summer different amount of ice packs in different portion of the trucks and for winter different amount of ice packs in different portion of the trucks so if the employee changes then again the experience uh, will be lost so they have to do it all over again so because of these challenges they want to use technology and uh, deploy sensors in each of these crates maybe one uh, sensor per each crate or one sensor for uh, for three or four crates depending upon the temperature variation um they want to install uh, this and monitor it online and remotely uh, from their offices so they can have a customized temperature profile for each customer uh, based on based on the type of the product for each uh, crate uh, sorry for each crate uh, based on the uh, type of the crate if it is ambient or if it is chilled or if it is frozen so for different crates there can be different uh, temperature profiles which are basically known as customized temperature profiles uh, for uh, maintaining the quality of food so so this is one application uh, which uh, remit project aims to uh, address in the netherlands and uh, there's huge amount of data that can be collected because for every 5 seconds you can uh, you can tune the sensors to receive data for every 5 seconds or for every 1 second or 5 minutes or depending upon the capacity of the storage of the server uh, you can tune the sensor so the sensors itself come with different frequencies uh, different uh, resolutions um, in the market so if lower the resolution uh, higher the resolution higher is the price uh, of the sensor so you have to really optimize the cost of the sensors again cost of uh, uh, the technology in order to uh, give uh, optimized results to the customer so this is uh, the architecture or uh, the uh, flow diagram of uh, data so uh, as you can see all the sensors uh, would be installed on the truck uh, as you can see here so there will be a gps sensor there will be different kinds of uh, sensors temperature sensors and that will all be sent to the gateway which will be either installed on the back of the truck or near the driver's cabin or on the top of the driver's cabin there are several challenges to the practical the implementation of this also it's uh, because when we try to install the gateways in the truck several of the drivers have had issues saying that we don't want to be exposed to iot devices because it is a concern of health uh, these radiations may be a concern of uh, health to to the drivers so they are not very uh, friendly to accept the installation of gateway on the trucks so these are some challenges practical challenges while the implementation of this project but uh as a alternative uh, uh, the installation uh, uh, company has suggested an alternative way uh, to do this that is by installing the gateway somewhere on uh, back side of the trucks uh, or an alternative location uh, which is uh, user friendly or not very harmful to to the drivers or the trucks uh, and there can be alternative sensors that can be thought of Uh, which do not actually require a gateway or uh, which has a inbuilt uh, sensor transfer uh, data transfer uh, inside the sensors itself but uh, in that case the per sensor cost would be higher so these are some challenges but uh, if uh, the primary goal is to not uh, harm any of the drivers or to adhere by the health uh, constraints of the drivers so even though it's higher cost is important to abide by the uh health uh, restrictions uh, etc and then once we get all the data from this uh, food uh, 
food items they are tra they are transported to a temporary cloud known as yamit visor so the visor company the installation company hosts a cloud a temporary cloud and from this temporary cloud the pre processed data is sent to to the central uh, storage at university of bedfordshire this is a second uh, storage so data over here is permanent and uh, we back and uh, the university of bedfordshire backs up the data Uh, for every uh, weekly for now and once the data starts to come in continuously on a daily basis then um, there will be daily backup of uh, of this uh, data uh, which is stored at the central uh, uh, server at the uh, university of bedfordshire so from this server all the data is then sent to data analytics partners to do the required data analysis data analysis so as i mentioned uh, uh, one of the problems they want to address is to develop customer uh, temperature profiles for each food crate the second problem that this pilot aims to solve is to to map the customer complaints with uh, the acceleration profiles of the food items that is some of the customers have complained that food is damaged food is uh, not arrived in the right quantity maybe maybe an apple is crushed or maybe an apple is half semi crushed or uh, just a scratch so for different levels of damage uh, the data that is received will be mapped with the acceleration profiles of the truck that means uh, uh, so for which particular uh, the acceleration profiles will be linked with the time so it is a time series data uh time series data means uh, for which time what is the profile of the acceleration of the truck so if there is a major variation in the acceleration of the truck then that particular variation will will be linked to the customer complaints and will will be will be seen if the damage is caused during the transportation phase or not so these are some efforts that are being carried out to to address the practical problems of the uh, of these pilot tests so this is the same kind of architecture that i mentioned earlier so sensors data from sensors uh, uh, and weather data gps data will all be sent to to, to the sensors to the temporary cloud uh, taken from the uh, cloud and will be sent to a central uh, storage server which is at uh, university of bedfordshire and then that will be sent towards the data analysis for all the data analytics partners uh, who are part of the consortium to do the data analysis so if there is a problem then it will generate an alert if there is no problem then there will be no alert generation so this is how we plan to do the uh, remit uh, uh, technology across the different pilots in in netherlands so this brings us to the end of the first uh, scenario that i explained uh, and uh, we um, now we can move to the second uh, scenario that we have that uh, remit project uh, is trying to address um this is a uh, special so sensors used in the earlier case are traditional sensors as you can see there were no new sensors used there is only temperature sensor there is only gps uh, sensor there is only uh, maybe humidity sensor could be used uh, and these are the few traditional sensors that were used so now in the next uh, remit scenario um the 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 raman spectroscopy is is used so in this basically uh, the quality of uh, food is uh, predicted by uh, the kind of uh, spectrum that is obtained by the raman spectrometer over uh, which is measured over the sample of the food so uh, the raman spectrometer uh, has uh, one second yeah so this is how the uh, sample uh, uh, raman uh, uh, the spectrum looks like so on the x axis we have wave number and on the y axis we have raman intensity uh, what it does is is basically it has a probe which measures which is kept on the sa food sample and uh, for every time instant it gives these graphs which are basically the composition of uh, the, the chemical composition Uh, or the raman spectrum of uh, of this that corresponds to this uh, particular food sample for a given time instant uh, so for each time instance you have a specific structure of the uh, wave uh, raman spectrum so uh, and uh, the aim the research aims to the raman spectrometer uh, spectroscopy aims to capture such spectrums for a continuous amount of time 
say for example for 5 minutes for 10 minutes you get million number of uh, such points uh, out of uh, this raman spectrometer so how this uh, spectrum changes over the time is what the raman spectrometer aims to uh, this research aims to observe and finally arrive at at what particular structure of this spectrum um, the spoilt the spoilt quality of uh, food is uh, detected so by visual inspection we can say that uh, this particular color is spoiled so for that uh, spoiled uh, 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 spoiled food they uh, capture the raman spectrum and consider that as a benchmark and uh, once we have this benchmark then um, we can predict the quality of other samples of food and say that this particular uh quality um is good or bad and by doing by applying a number of uh, predictive uh, mechanisms we can say that um, this quality is good or this quality is bad uh, and so ultimately for first uh, instance uh, the raman spectrometer uh, aims to get a, that corresponding wave number which says that this wave number uh, for this type of food the quality is good or bad so and and once we have further amount of food samples we can say that if it reaches this wave number then uh, the food quality is bad or uh, good so this is laboratory testing and so once this they are able to arrive at a particular wave number for a given number of for a given for a given uh, type of food um, then they uh, then uh, they would transport this into the trucks Uh, as you can see in these pictures the transport this into the truck say for example the food when it is transported in this truck a sensor would be installed inside this truck and send all the uh, data towards the lab to the lab uh, which can be then taken by the raman spectrometer probe and they would generate the graphs and these graph data will be sent to the uh, big, uh, the wetfordshire server which can be analyzed uh, using different uh, data analytics tool prediction mechanisms and uh, break the sample of uh, the food so for this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, pilot test uh, chicken samples from a particular local company were were uh, used as you can see in the next uh, in the in the slides which i mentioned here these are some chicken samples which were used to generate the summer uh, raman spectroscopy so this is still under research and um, they are looking for uh, uh, pilot scenario uh, uh, to do the testing and uh, so this uh, this this brings us to the end of uh, the second kind of scenario that we have for remit project and we are trying to address and the remit project basically tries to tries to address the third scenario is um, uh, i would like to present the third scenario over here now uh, so the uh, just to summarize the first one used traditional sensors uh, to build the uh, traditional sensor to measure the data the second one used some new kind of technology known as raman uh, spectrometer to sense to measure the quality of uh, chicken samples and so in this in this particular uh, pilot test uh, um, we use the traditional sensors we uh, i mean uh, uh, the temperature and humidity sensors are being used to, so what is the scenario let's have a look uh, on the on the scenario so this is a family owned uh, Uh, beef manufacturing uh, company in uh, northern ireland the so they have two problems uh, uh, basically in their processing uh, plant um, so this particular pilot test aims uh, at the processing uh, stage so the remit project uh, uh, the scenarios that we try to address in the remit projects uh, there are different scenarios like first scenario addressed uh the transportation uh, phase so that is like a last mile delivery phase uh whereas the second uh, raman spectrometer uh, it it is also a transport uh, it also aims to address the transportation uh, address the quality control in the transportation phase so uh, whereas this one uh, aims to address the quality control in the processing stage or right at the source if we can say which are early stages of the supply chain so they have a processing plant uh, or uh, you can say uh, a slaughter house uh, uh, they have and basically they have two problems the first pilot test aims to detect the clostridium esters in the processing plant so which is a big problem in for uh, for meat plants uh, meat production plants so they really don't know when at what stage 
this clostridium ester starts to appear so once they appear they would have to remove all the samples of meat and just uh, simply throw it off and uh, they don't have a technique to re, uh, predict the uh, occurrence of uh, clostridium esters in the early stages so they can be detected once they are already formed and uh, they would have to chunk out all the uh, uh, samples which are uh, the batch the whole batch of that particular uh, meat so uh, remit project aims to install some real time processing uh, or sampling mechanism so that they can be uh, instantly uh, detected in the supply uh, in the in the process in the assembly line itself um, by seeing either the color or the odor um, of the meat uh, that is flowing through the uh, assembly or the conveyor conveyor belts so or if if they find out that this meat is more prone to a uh, spoilage then they will subject it to further processing or uh, subject it to spray they have some spraying mechanism to remove this bacteria so they may do some uh, uh, spray to these uh, based on the inputs given by the uh, rmi technology through the app so this is first uh, pilot test that's uh, we uh, first problem that we are trying to address the second is uh, the meat uh, uh, they are kept in uh, chambers known as dry aging chambers so as you can see the chamber the figure that appears towards the right is a dry aging chamber the meat has is hung in different portions of this uh, so right now they do not have uh, a proper procedure to uh, measure the weight loss of food that is uh, they remove the food from this uh, chamber once uh, they uh, arrive at a particular uh, amount of weight loss and uh, they don't have uh, a specific uh, scientific way of measuring the weight loss so they want to install both temperature and humidity so based on the humidity of the surrounding environment they would say that this particular meat now has reduced this much amount of weight uh, and now they can be removed from this dredging chamber so to have this thorough scientific technology they want to use uh, remit technology to detect the quality of uh, meat and also the weight loss of the meat in the dredging chamber so these are the two uh, major challenges that uh, Remit technology aims to address uh, with this company. So, um, this is the next uh, pilot test uh, that is uh, being used in the Remit project. So, as we now discuss three pilot tests, and this we move on to the fourth kind of uh, pilot test here, which is known as uh, the Cyberbar uh, pilot test. So. the pilot uh, the scenario is not decided yet but the technology i would like to present just the technology here so the cyber bar technology essentially is uh, uh, university college dublin uh, is uh, an expert uh, in this particular technology and uh, they plan to use this to measure or track the quality of food there are pros and cons of using this approach uh, so the advantage is to have uh, direct information of uh, the quality of food as you can see this etching uh, is known as the cyber bar technology so each food or uh, uh, each food item would be etched upon with this kind of uh, barcode or a serial number which will then be read upon read by meters or by reading meters uh and uh, the quality of food will be tracked uh, with the help of this uh, cyber bar etching technology uh in the earlier cases if you see uh, we are measuring the food by from a certain distance measuring the quality of food or temperature or humidity uh, not directly on the food but from a certain distance so that may um, give some errors in the accuracy of the temperature accuracy of the humidity that corresponds to that particular type of food so in this case that kind of ambiguity is eliminated and you directly measure the quality of uh, the food directly from the food itself this um, several customers may not want to take uh, or accept this kind of technology so this is the challenge of using this technology and therefore in remit we are using uh, planning to do this but majorly we focus on uh, traditional sensors and 
raman uh, and the newer sensors such as uh, raman spectrometer and there is another one uh, known as 3d fluorescence as well but uh, due to covid uh, the pilot test for 3d fluorescence uh, is uh, not uh, uh, yet uh, i mean uh, not have been possible but still the sensor uh, search the corresponding 3d fluorescence sensor is very new in the market and is not easily available so there's a lot of uh, search being conducted to obtain the right kind of 3d spectrometer to do the uh, uh, 3d fluorescence measurements so these are the different parameters we have in the in the remit project uh, and finally i would like to present some progress in the development of the app uh, which essentially uh, connects all the data Uh, that is collected in the RMI project. There are different types of primary data, there are different types of uh, metadata that are uh, used by the mobile app uh, to suggest uh, the status of the food item transported uh, to all the different actors. So, as you can see, the different types of data that are that the app uses is vehicle GPS tracking of the vehicles, GPS tracking of the drivers, and then. Um, uh the actual departure time of the journey the actual arrival time of the journey we have the data uh, of uh, gps data uh, and uh, to know the shortest route from one uh, the uh, destination uh, origin point to the destination point and uh, how much amount of petrol is saved by using which amount of route um and um, the app also helps to organize uh, uh, organize themselves all the drivers i mean they can suggest different options to the drivers as to how best they can organize their journey so if if they can use the sat nav for a journey whether they want whether they can use the sat nav or sometimes using the sat nav is uh, efficient fuel efficient shortest distance sometimes it is not so the app would say whether to go for this or not uh, sat nav nav navigation and then whether um, they can depart and when they can arrive what's the appropriate time they should depart based on the traffic conditions and uh, what is the appropriate time they uh, the, they will arrive if they start at this time and uh, know if a phone is being charged or not know if a phone battery is low know if and these are all different types of uh, minor uh, advantages that app also aims to provide uh, uh, when the driver uh, is on the run so these are just sample uh, trial runs made uh, while traveling this is the actual uh, screen of the app so while traveling from uh, from their home to the uh, conference meeting we just tried a trial run and uh, this is how it looks uh, over the google map and the app actually uses the google map to show the uh, tracks uh, to show the path travel path on the screen so you can select uh, different routes based on uh, just like how you can select on the google map uh, so you can uh, select and if you select this particular uh, route it will show the temperature uh, the humidity and the uh, on any 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 time uh, it's recorded by the app so these are the three different types of sensors that were uh, used uh, during the trial run So wise four two two zero four two one zero wise four four seven zero four four seven one wise four six one zero four six seven one are different types of uh, sensors that are available commercially available in the market and they were they were linked with the app uh, to give the results for a particular uh, route travel. uh so this is the kind of uh, architecture that uh, that is there uh, we have at the moment so the app collects all the data from all the sensors and finally it tra transports to the levstone uh, gateway app uh, so the the app it also has a gateway so and then finally to the cloud storage uh, uh, which can be then be used for analysis etc so this brings us to the end of all the remit scenario presentations uh, scenarios that uh, that are there and how they are connected via app uh, to the uh, bedfordshire server um and uh, before uh, concluding i would like to present a small uh, work that we have done um uh, in building an optimization model for reducing food waste so 
the previous efforts that i explained every uh, so far is real time kind of uh, uh, data analysis uh, that we are trying to do so apart from real time there can be also uh, offline kind of work which uh, an optimization model can help us uh, simulate and analyze um, analyze the information that we have so far uh, so because an optimization mo model cannot be uh, essentially deployed in real time uh, because um, if the model is simple enough uh, it can be deployed but if it's complex then uh, it, uh, the real time synchronization of uh, optimization models becomes challenging uh, so it uh, it is important for us to see how much uh, amount of uh, data variables how much amount of uh, uh, problem size uh, is there uh, and uh, to what extent an optimization model can actually be used in real time so before we can do that uh, uh, we can always try and solve uh, an optimization model and see uh, how uh, uh, i mean how much cost is involved in reducing the food waste and how much we can save the cost by reducing food waste just to have a idea of uh, how much uh, food waste by saving uh, as to have an idea and by by choosing different options of technology how much food we can save and how much food waste cost uh, we can uh, save uh, so in so in the literature uh, we have uh, in the past uh, we um, uh, by going through the literature we see that there is less amount of efforts for integrating transportation network design with the quality control uh, mechanism so this study aims to address this gap by uh, integrating the quality control um, of maintaining the food within the respective temperature and the respective humidity levels with the transportation network design so to and uh, to fill this gap the scenario the kind of scenario that this problem aims to address is um, is a transportation scenario where we have three different types of uh, transport modes that is vehicles which are equipped with uh, which are not equipped with temperature and humidity control uh, technology vehicles which are having second one is vehicles which are having uh, temperature monitoring but not temperature control facility and third vehicles which are having both temperature monitoring and temperature control technology so Uh, in the previous literature such kind of explicit focus on the different types of technology enabled uh, vehicles uh, were not seen so in this uh, particular research we aim to address these two important things one is to capture uh, uh, how different uh, three types of technology enabled trucks can be uh, used or which is more cost efficient uh, and second how uh, temperature and humidity threshold can be integrated into the transportation network uh, design so this is a basic scenario so we considered a sample scenario of two farms having uh, three products uh, productions and uh, which uh, are transported using as i mentioned three different types of vans vans with no temperature control vans with temperature control but with uh, no monitoring and vans with temperature control and monitoring so and finally the sample scenario uh, addresses to transport it to three different supermarkets so the optimization model basically consists of the objective function to minimize transportation and food wastage cost um and different um, uh, constraints that are uh, related to this particular objective functions is uh, is uh, vehicle related constraints such as vehicle capacity or um, and then temperature and humidity threshold constraints that each of the food uh, item that is transported should lie within a particular uh, lower and upper limit of temperature and lower and upper limit of uh, humidity um, and uh, basic uh, demand and farm capacity constraints which are basic to any transportation optimization problem so at the farm the capacity of the farm should be Uh, enough sufficient enough to meet the demand so the amount of food that is taken from the farm should be always lesser than the maximum capacity uh, and and uh, the amount of food that is sent to the supermarket should be either greater than or equal to the demand that is uh, available at uh, demand that is uh, uh, at that particular supermarket of of that particular food type and um, 
Finally, maximum number of trailers available for transport is also considered as a constraint. Um, and so different inputs that we give to the model are distance between farms and consumer demand points, unit transportation costs, demand at different uh, customer points, number of available crates for transporting the food at each uh, for each food type, and uh, lower and upper temperature threshold, lower and upper humidity thresholds, and finally, in the outputs, we aim to arrive at shipment and uh, quantity routing decisions, minimize total shipment costs, uh, food wastage costs, and food waste reduced, finally. So this is the mathematical uh, equation we have for, um, uh, for, um, uh, uh, for, for the uh, automation model. So the decision variables of the automation model are uh, mainly two. One is food quantity of uh, type of food quantity uh, of type K transported from farm I to supermarket J. So, as I mentioned earlier, there are uh, this is generalization of the scenario that we presented earlier. Earlier we presented that there are two farms and uh, three supermarkets. So this is a general a general uh, generalization of that particular scenario where if there are n farms and n supermarkets, uh, then the same model can be applied. And food quantity of type K, that is now in this case, we have considered three products and there can be K number of products uh, and uh, using transport van V. So we are considering now three types of transport vans, which are uh, vans with temperature and uh, without temperature and monitoring, uh, temperature and uh, uh, vans with temperature monitoring but no control, vans with uh, both temperature monitoring and control. So these are the different uh, generalization uh, and decision variables, general decision variables, X, I, J, K, V. And the second type of decision variable is N, I, J, K, V, which is number of crates used to transport the food type, K from I to supermarket J. So the objective function is modeled uh, uh, such as minimize Z is equal to triple sigma I, J, K, C, I, J, K, V, X, I, J, K, V. So the first part is the transportation cost of transporting the food quantity X, I, J, K, V. And C, I, J, K, V is the unit transportation cost of transporting the food from farm I to supermarket J of food type K in vehicle type V. Uh, so this is the total transportation cost for, the, for a given particular scenario. And the next three terms correspond to the penalty cost of uh, not complying with temperature and humidity thresholds. So PT means penalty of not complying with temperature threshold. PH means penalty of not complying with humidity thresholds. And finally, we subtract PTH because when we do PT and uh, add the amounts uh, PT and PTH, uh, what happens is there might be a case where a particular crate um, does not comply with both temperature and humidity. In that case, it will be added towards T and added towards H. So we should subtract one amount, uh, one particular uh, uh, penalty because over here it is uh, added two times. So we should subtract once. And that's the reason why adding uh, minus uh, PTH uh, to this particular equation would give us the actual total cost uh, of uh, transportation plus food wastage. So this is the construction of the objective function. And these two are basic constraints which say that uh, the total amount of uh, food grains transported should at least satisfy the demand at the supermarket J. Uh, we have written greater than or equal to because uh, it simplifies the problem. And, and um, if, we, if we do equal to, then uh, it will be a strict uh, uh, kind of uh, constraint. So relaxing this a bit, putting greater than or equal to demand would help us to arrive at the solution uh, faster. And uh, the capacity constraints at the farm, total amount of food that is lifted from the farm should be less than or equal to the total capacity available at the farm. Um, and for this, uh, so there are other constraints as well uh, before going to the methodology. Like I mentioned, uh, constraints of vehicle uh, trailers, number of trailers that are used, and uh, these are there are some other constraints which are not presented here for the uh, uh, benefit of time. So the methodology that we used uh, uh, for this particular optimization model is uh, particle sum optimization because in some of the other constraints there is a non-linearity in the 
uh, constraints so it is become it becomes an nonlinear uh, optimization and therefore we use this uh, particles home optimization to solve uh, this is a small uh, problem set which is which has only 18 18 total number of variables with two farms three supermarkets and three food types so uh 2 into 3 into 3 uh has, has gives you only 18 variables so this is a small problem set but for larger problem sets this methodology will be useful therefore we have used this uh if you have some thousand variables we increase the number of problem sizes then still the same methodology can be used and uh, uh used for arriving at a near optimal solution so this is a uh, uh, since uh, the focus of present uh, presentation is not on the uh particle some optimization i would like to skip this but um, but just to be brief uh, pso technique is a meta heuristic optimization uh, technique which uh, can be used uh, which uh, significantly to arrive at near optimal solutions in uh, real time and it's a um, uh, it's better compared to other uh, i mean of course meta heuristic algorithms are pro highly problem specific and needs to be tested for different types of problems so future research can be done if this problem can be solved in a better way by any other better uh, uh, technique so but for now we are uh, trying to uh, investigate the efficiency of the solution using pso approach uh, and the scenario kind of uh, uh, we have adopted for this is uh, as i mentioned earlier for two farms uh, and three products uh so there are three different types of crates that that uh, these three products go into so we considered the uh, banana orange and apple as uh, the three products and uh, the supermarket demand the farm capacity um and uh, uh, we make a decision whether banana goes into ambient chilled or frozen by ourselves only uh, because each food type has its own kind of uh, predetermined uh, crate uh, so and then um uh, finally the temperature and humidity thresholds for each food type are taken from the literature so for lower uh, for banana for lo the lower and upper thresholds are uh, 13 degree and 15 degrees uh, centigrade for orange 3.33 and 8.89 for apple minus 1 and 4.44 uh, and similarly humidity so these are taken from uh, standard literature and uh, we have we are obtained uh, the convergence graph that is uh, uh the point at which the the cost uh, is not minimized any further uh, and uh, uh we are yet to further extend this research in terms of uh, specifically uh, uh continuing this for larger problem sets uh, so this is the main contribution out of this uh, particular uh, optimization model where uh, as i mentioned earlier it uh, considers three different uh, transport vans and uh, it integrates the total transportation cost with with total uh, cost of food wasted uh, which is not uh, present in the previous literature uh, and so we uh, i had, um this is uh, work was presented in euroma conference and it uh, still needs a lot of improvement in terms of uh, uh, presenting the results uh, so we have just arrived at the convergence graphs and still we are uh, uh calculating the uh, deeper insights from from the results and also extending this to larger data sets and uh, in, and including carbon uh, emissions and sustainability perspective so this is work is uh, still planned for extension uh, uh so if you are interested you can approach me to work on this also um and uh, finally the remit project aims to gives a lot of benefits to end users so firstly as mentioned uh, in one of our earlier sides it aims to reduce the uh, ah, it aims to establish uh, something known as food fingerprint just like carbon uh, footprint we uh, we aim to establish uh, something known as uh, the remit project uh, something known as food fingerprint which says uh, how much amount of food is uh, saved uh, while you transfer uh, 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 when you re redirect the food to the nearest uh, consumer so with the help of remit technology means with the help of remit technology how much food are we aiming to uh, save so that is uh, known as a food fingerprint and um, monitoring is um, uh, yeah because of the use of iot technology sensor technology efficient monitoring of food is made possible and especially for different environments uh, for food on the go and also for food 
which is at the warehouses and uh, connecting the different actors of the supply chain through the mobile app so there is more connectivity in the traditional supply chain people work in a non integrated manner whereas with the help of technology uh, everybody comes to a single platform and they get to know the status of the food and they are all connected uh, uh, with each other so and uh, of course ultimately it saves a uh, lot of time and saves a lot of money uh, in terms of uh, the amount of uh, food waste uh, reduce and once the uh, project uh, is commercialized then it can be applied across uh, uh, larger scale so larger is the scale of the pilot test larger is the savings so if you apply in smaller investment smaller uh, scenarios then savings might not be huge but if it's a large organization then savings will also be very high and uh, it helps to improve the revenue um, by using this uh, technology we can also claim we can also claim higher uh, prices to our food in uh, there can be a stage because people uh, customers also look at uh, how well the food is maintained at what uh, level or what quality levels and because of the technology higher quality levels will attract uh, higher customers and uh, it can be targeted for higher uh, segment of customers and generate and help to improve the revenue as well and also it uh, reduces the carbon footprint uh, because of reducing the food waste uh, moving on to the next set of advantages uh, it also helps to develop a whole uh, network of uh, uh, food manufacturing technology uh, using industries and um, and the whole industry uh, kind of uh, exposes itself with the Uh, different kinds of people with different kinds of networking uh, uh, people different uh, kinds of industries uh, to do the digitalization of the whole supply chain so you you have access to lots of uh, academic institutions industry will be connected with academia academia will be connect, uh, connected with industry and so uh, this kind of um, initiatives will help to develop networking and collaboration and there is quality assurance uh, also uh, continuous uh, like i mentioned earlier use of technology will help us to maintain the quality of food and also promising to uh, customers and um, and with this uh, we can also arrive at uh, decision support tools uh, you new decision support mechanisms uh, to comply with the real time real time uh, food quality monitoring systems a new decision support uh, mechanism should evolve and this evolution will take will take place with the help of uh, this initiative uh, and uh, ultimately as i mentioned to comply with real time there should be a tailoring of traditional uh, decision support so that's what we say tailored means um we need to improvise we know we not we do not we don't have to necessarily bring in new very new um, so new all together technology but improve some of the old technologies already existing ones to uh, suit to the context uh, and uh, and there is and there is a lot of uh, scope in the sensor technologies so we will realize which sensor technology is best suitable for our own application Uh, because uh, if you see the sensor market it's uh, it's an ocean uh, and once you uh, complete this research we will get a database of all the uh, sensors that can be used for different kinds of scenarios different kinds of uh, foods uh, applicable to reduce the food wastage so and finally data data driven decision making so because of the huge amount of data now once at the end of the project once all the data is collected uh, we have huge lots and lots of amount of data that can be used for uh, doing some historical uh, data analysis and then finally uh, make a decision uh, for future uh, pilot tests uh, and we can we can have a database of uh, uh rules or decisions uh, uh, with us based on the experience we had from remit project and which can be used for future projects so so we can also do this kind of data driven decision making uh, in addition to real time uh, data so this is this brings me to the end of the presentation uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, listening patiently and uh, sorry for the hiccups in between So thank you sir thank you very due much due to network connections so this is the remit present uh, i always uh, go to the